Hello, this is Jamie, and this is Supplier 2 News. Today is April 29, 2021, and today we're going to be discussing the generational breakdown as it relates to wealth in America. But before we get into it, as always, please subscribe to the channel if you like the content. Leave a like if you like the video, you know, comment, and also share with other people you think may be interested in this information. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So, um, as you can see with the Yahoo article here in front of us, uh, we're going to be talking about the Yahoo and the NPR art articles. But the Yahoo article, which is actually covering the NPR article, um, is titled Millennials are broke. Some are way broker than others. Study shows. And that's pretty much uh, the gist of it. Um, so the Yahoo article is essentially a summary of, again, of the NPR piece. What we're talking about here is millennials and how they compare to the baby boomer generations. Now, for those who aren't aware, the baby, boom, the baby boomer generation is somewhere between the mid 1940s or if you were born, I should say, in the mid 1940s up until I believe it's the mid 1960s, uh, mid 1960s, maybe late 1960s ish. Uh, that's if you were born at that time. When it comes to millennials, um, it's pretty much if you were born in the um, I believe it's early to mid 1980s up until the mid 1990s uh, so that's pretty much the generational you know, uh, the generations that are being compared to uh, interesting that they skipped over generation x um, not really a lot was talked about generation x so i, I can't really pull a lot from there i mean i'm sure it, it's in the information if you pull it from like the census or the government data but they decided to, to start with or compare baby boomers to millennials now uh, the real key piece that they're comparing to is uh, to try to have as best of a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, basically, they're comparing the ages uh, and how much wealth is associated per age. So, you know, if a baby boomer was 30, for example, how much wealth did they had they amass versus a millennial uh, at the same age of 30. So, as you can see here, it's no secret that millennials are broke. Uh, kind of go through here, but here we are. New research showed that when considering just older millennials, all right, so we're just looking at older millennials, uh, millennials born before 1990, <clears throat> while white millennials have managed to start closing the wealth gap between them and older generations, black millennials have actually seen that gap widen. And we're going to get into why that is. Uh, so this kind of makes sense because I know I was born uh, before 1990. And when you think about, consider the fact that a lot of early millennials actually came out of college during the great recession right so that period between 2008 to i would i would honestly say 2013 um we saw a lot of people in you know late mid to late 80s to a little bit of the early 90s uh, coming out of college and you know those first couple of years which are extremely important as you're building you're essentially building your resume your experience qualifications to land a second job was essentially curtailed right like you Whatever job you, for most people, whatever their first or second or even second or third options were just completely devastated and not there. So because of that, they had to find, you know, other jobs to somewhat build some type of experience just with anything. And what we saw is that because of that, uh, there had, has definitely been a delay in the um, amount of money that people were able to earn. So as we go down here, research from the Federal uh, Reserve or so research at Institute of Economic Equity at the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. They essentially looked into it. And what they found is that older millennials have made pretty substantial wealth gains over the past few years, though they still remain 11 percent uh, behind previous generations. So that's everyone uh, between what I was looking at. It, it appears between 2016 and 2019. That's really when the huge jump was. Uh, there was a really significant gap, but uh, because uh, based on what they said in the NPR article, which we'll get into between 2016 and 2019, because a lot of millennials did own homes, uh, obviously those homes, you know, were increasing wealth as well as stock market um, really helped that. Uh, so it's not, you know, for those who are like, well, yeah, 2016, 2019 income levels went up. Like, no, uh, what happened was this honestly was around the Trump tax cuts in 2017. Uh, the stocks uh, definitely jumped up. And, you know, a lot of millennials actually benefited from that, which is pretty interesting. Um, so as we kind of get a little bit more specific, as you can see, uh, where is it here? 11 percent. If we take a closer look, shows that uh, it is primarily white college educated millennials who have managed to amass wealth. Uh, meanwhile, black and non-educated 
not college educated have actually fallen further behind as research shows white millennials trailing the wealth of previous white generations by only five percent that that is college educated while black millennials are shockingly uh, 52 percent behind previous black generations and that's just you know overall um gets a little weird here um they don't kind of quote the npr article uh, exactly right so as, as you can see here as 80% of black millennials still have student loan debt, um, they actually mean black millennials with you know college degrees or that attended college went, have student loan debt. Uh, so, But that is important. 80% uh, of black millennials who went to college still have debt versus just about half of white millennials who went to college. So the, the, uh, the last piece here before you go hop into the NPR article is that this massive wealth disparity is even larger for millennial families, right? As data indicates that the typical white millennial family has 88,000 in wealth, while well, a typical black millennial family only has about 5,000 in wealth. And that is a drop when you compare um, both both of them to to the baby boomer generation. But uh, what we see is that you know white millennials with college degrees are, I believe, it's almost 5% uh, disparity. So they're lower, but they're catching up. with, with But when you look at like black millennials, it is uh, incredibly, um, again, it's around that 50% less wealth at the same age so if we if we hop one over um sorry about that here we go uh, to the npr the growing there is growing segregation in millennial wealth and i i mean i just couldn't say it better right uh <clears throat> as we see here they found that the so this is kind of the full summary um, of the npr study but uh according to again the the federal reserve bank of st louis they found that the typical millennial household as of 2016 had only about 28,000 in net worth, right? So that's just everyone, college educated or not. So that's 40% behind the, what previous generations had in the wealth of the same age. Uh, the lost generation, um, some people are referring it to, which, I mean, when you think about the fact that, you know, you've got the uh, Great Recession and then hit by the pandemic, I mean, this is pretty much, I mean, this is the lost generation. When it comes to generations, it's really about luck, right? Um, the baby boomer generation just happened to be born right after World War II, right when the you know American engine was really just driving. Essentially, all of Europe owed us money, so you know, basically anything that you could, anything that America was going to do was going to make money. Uh, we saw that really drop off. I want to say in like the 90s, that's when the American dominance really just kind of disappeared, uh, and what we saw is really a big separation of wealth, right? Um, because of you know policy that was extremely kind to to wealthy individuals at the time uh, we saw a huge and massive wealth uh at the top and that's essentially what we're, what we're, what we're continuing right and even as the wealth gap is is kind of closing and it says here in a couple of points here about how you know because there are white white millennials typically come from wealthier households than you know black millennials if, if you're kind of comparing the two uh they're just they just have that protection right if you while you may not start a job where you want if your parents are a little bit wealthier, you can, you know, stay at home. You can, you know, delay a little bit. You can even, you know, get money from your parents in order to kind of sustain you until you find that job, uh, which it appears as if a lot of millennials, from my experience, uh, were able to get the job that typically you would see, or at least I've been told um, that you would get around your like mid 20s. Uh, probably most of us got those jobs around like late 20s to, to early 30s so probably like a five-year delay um, so if, if your family is you know a little bit wealthier you're able to sustain that until you can get that job if your family is not wealthy now you're in a situation where you can't sustain yourself and now you're taking less jobs which does not put you in a really good position to to get a better paying job because you uh, because what you're trying to do is you're not gaining that experience um, in order to, to get that. And then in addition, you also have other people like, you know, Generation Z is right on our heels that are taking those jobs that you could have potentially won. But because you have lack of experience, you're not getting. All right. So it goes through, through a lot in terms of like kind of, you know, crunching the numbers. I, I kind of went through a couple of things here, uh, especially like that three year between 2016 and 2019. Uh, as you can see here, by 2019, the typical millennial household had increased its net worth to about 51,000. Millennials are still significantly behind in amassing wealth, wealth about 11% or about 6,400, but they're way better off than they were three years before. So again, 2016 uh, to 2019, we saw that jump. Um, more than half of millennials now own homes and home prices surge. Again, I, I kind of already said that. Uh, now, when we're talking about the lost uh, millennials, this is when we're talking about those with, without college degrees, right? Again, when we're talking about the baby boom generation, um, automotive manufacturing still uh, 
what else um you know just engineering just just you know newspapers even uh, you were able to kind of go into work you know work on the manufacturing um mining what have you and you're able to build your wealth up i mean from what i've been told you could work at a plant for 20 30 years and you know make enough money to live right next to a doctor or a lawyer but those jobs just are not available they do not exist um any longer for for millennials so as you can see here, the most disturbing finding in the data concerns black millennials. While the typical white millennial family has about 88,000 in wealth, the typical black millennial family only has about 5,000 in wealth. And I mean, there's really nothing else to, to say here. Between 2007 and 2019, black millennials fell further and further behind. Uh, I kind of talked about that 5% um, between that 2016 to 19, but uh, black millennials for, uh, fell further and further behind, not just compared with white millennials, but compared but compare it with previous generations of black Americans. While white millennials trail wealth of previous generations by only 5%, uh, black millennials are at 52%. So, you know, again, shocking, but that's essentially where we're at. And I mean, while there's more representation than ever before, or at least that's what they say, uh, for black millennials, the wealth just is not there. Um, and this is in 2019, before the pandemic of 2021. So keep, keep that in mind, or 2020, I should say, I apologize. So keep that in mind. All this was done before the pandemic hit. And I mean, a lot of things um, probably are even gonna change for white millennials, right? So for example, we know for a fact that the majority of people who lost their jobs were women, right? Uh, this is, I mean, we're gonna see a huge, huge hit to, to millennials. I mean, even though the wealth was, was growing, remember we saw a lot of people lose their jobs have to have like a delayed payment and then a lot of that money just kind of amassed even further to, to the wealthy uh, i do believe that you know baby boomers who have amassed that wealth they're just going to simply pass it on to their children um so that that wealth is just it's millennials will eventually get it especially like white millennials who are going to inherit that, that money so they so millennial the trend the net worth of millennials will increase because of the way that you know money will be transferred um, from generation to generation so that will happen but uh, i mean it's already kind of here playing playing this day i mean it's we're just going to see a huge huge amassing of of power and wealth uh to the wealthy and we're gonna we have to kind of figure out what we can do to essentially help you know non-educated and, and everyone else right so i don't know how this is going to go uh but i mean what we're doing right now i mean let's just look at the stats it's it's only benefiting a few um so figuring out how this economy is going to transition to the digital co economy that it's been for the past 20 years uh what's 20 i'll say past 10 years right when it's really churning out uh but you know we really have to figure out what we're going to do here um for all businesses as you guys know this is a small business focused channel um, i like to kind of show this to, to show you where we're at but uh again we'll is can be amassed in a lot of different ways real estate you know investment stocks and bonds um, small businesses you know now crypto uh, so there's a lot of different ways but you know if you don't have any money to invest in this you know then you're going to struggle and what we're seeing is that only a very few have enough money to make those you know take those chances and that's unfortunate and we have to figure out a better way to to, to you know give more opportunities to everyone else so that's kind of uh the, it for today just wanted to talk about that uh, let me know your thoughts, you know, leave a comment, leave a like, you know, also subscribe to the, to the channel if you like the content and share with other users who you think may be interested in this content. All right. As always, thank you so much for your time and have a great day.